Amen. Praise God. Well, we're looking this morning at a an interesting area called They Know Not at What They Stumble. So what are we referring to there? They know not at what they stumble. We're looking at the difference between those in darkness and those in light. Those in darkness and those in light. There's a very clear distinction made in the Word of God about that. And that's why the Gospel is called Glorious. It talks about the glorious Gospel of Christ. Glorious means there's light that can come in and talks about the light shined into our hearts, and we'll look at that scripture later. But let's start with Proverbs 4. Proverbs 4, and we'll look at verses 14 to 19. Because I want you to understand that those without Christ are in a very bad state, whether, whether it seems not uh, whether it seems so or not, whether they think so or not. Because the Bible is the, the truth and it shows what the situation really is. And that's what we need to understand. Proverbs 4, 14 to 19. So we'll start from verse 14 and we'll go to verse 19. It says, Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men, avoid it, Pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. For they sleep not, except they have done mischief, and their sleep is taken away, unless they cause some to fall. They eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. The way of the wicked is as darkness, they know not at what they stumble. Okay, so we see, and the Bible is full of this, we see the difference between the just, or the righteous, and the wicked, or those who are not righteous. So we're not talking, when we're talking about wicked, we're talking about a state, a state that people are in. If people are not in the righteous state, then they're in the wicked state. And just keep your finger in Proverbs 4, just so that you can see that right through, not just Proverbs, right through the whole of the scriptures, there is a comparison between the righteous and the wicked. Uh, for example, if you go to uh, Proverbs, uh, we'll go to Proverbs 13, just as an example. Look at verse 9, Proverbs 13, verse 9. Proverbs 13, 9 says, The light of the righteous rejoiceth, but the lamp of the wicked shall be put out. You know, we could go to many, many scriptures, and I encourage you to look into the scriptures, and you'll find that it compares the righteous and the wicked. It compares light and darkness. It compares truth and error. Okay, so when we talk about the wicked, we're not just talking about their actions. You know, those without Christ are what the Bible says are servants of sin. They're sinners, servants of sin. Those with Christ are servants of righteousness. If we have a look at uh, go back to Proverbs 4 again and look at verse 19. Verse 19. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. It's a very serious situation. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They're in spiritual darkness and they know not. Notice there's, there's something affecting their minds, and we'll see what that is in a minute. They know not at what they stumble. And so when you talk to those without Christ, you will see that their conversation is not full of um, the ways of God, not full of uh, the ways of truth, 
And you'll know that they, and you'll be able to see this, the more you know the word, you'll know that they have very little understanding of eternal things and spiritual things. And in fact, many of them uh, devalue spiritual things like, for example, prayer or going to church or fellowshipping with other believers uh, or the, the, the Bible itself. Okay. But, uh, you'll hear them talking about it full of uh, being full of mistakes and errors. Um, <clears throat> that is an incorrect statement. The Bible is truth. I'm talking about the authorised version here. Look at Psalm 119, verse 105. Psalm 119, verse 105. So they're in darkness, those without Christ. We'll see more about that when we get into the New Testament. They're in darkness. What must come into their life in order for them to have light? And this is one, one thing for us to really grab hold of. Psalm 119, verse 105, gives us a real key here. It says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So you can see that the word of God is, is likened to being a lamp and a light. And if you go across to verse 130, you see here, the entrance of thy words giveth what? Light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. Okay, so those that currently don't know what they're stumbling at, and they're stumbling at all types of things, you think about being in a room without any light, um, and it's all dark, you could be going along and things happen and you and, and you're falling all over the place and you don't know what's happening. You don't know what you've fallen against. Similarly, in life, people in darkness, they don't know why this is happening. They don't know their direction. They don't know what happens after death. They don't, uh, if they believe in God, it's usually uh, a very airy, fairy type of belief. They're not firm in what they understand. So there's a real darkness in the thinking and in the ways of those without Christ. So the wicked are those not born again in a state of sin, and we'll look at that in more detail in a minute. They are in darkness and servants of sin. The righteous are those who are born again and in a state of righteousness. They are in the light, and the Bible calls them servants of righteousness. So let's have a look at John 3. And we'll go from verses 14 to 21. John 3 is a good section of scripture to show us the state of many people. And as I said, there's the darkness and there's the light. John is, is full of comparison between darkness and light. If you've read through the book of John, you'll, you'll know that. John chapter 3, we'll start from verse 14. And we'll go to verse 21. One of the reasons we're touching on this is so that we understand the urgency of the gospel. And as I mentioned, it's called glorious. The urgency of the gospel being preached and taught and, and shown to those without Christ. So looking at uh, John 3, starting from verse 14, and we're going to go to verse 20. One and says, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Okay, so eternal life in Christ is a quality of life. It's living forever with God in his kingdom, because everyone lives forever. But are they going to be forever with God in his kingdom or separated from him? So verse 15 says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God, this is one we all know, we should know. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, 
that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So God is giving this wonderful gift. He's given the gift of his son. And the Bible says that uh, God purchased the church with his own blood. So Jesus was God manifest in the flesh, God the Son. And we see that he gave, uh, God the Father so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, the most precious gift ever given, that whosoever, that would be you and me, and before we, we were born again, we made the decision to believe in him. And that meant to follow him. It meant to repent of our sins and to follow him. But whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So before we were believing in him, we were on the path of perishing. Okay, the path of perishing. Think about that. Verse 17, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Okay, so if you think about this, the world is already in a fallen state. The Bible says the whole world lieth in wickedness. The world is already condemned because of sin. It's already judged. So God sent his son into the world to save it, to save mankind. You know that not every person is going to be saved because there has to be a decision. And you see that in verses 15 and 16. Whosoever believeth in him. There's going to be a lot that don't believe in him. Okay. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's a choice, isn't it? You can choose to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your saviour. Notice what it says in verse 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned. So they come out of the condemnation of sin. Right? He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So you can see if they believe not, they stay in a state of darkness, of condemnation. and uh, But he that believeth on him is not condemned. We come into a state of righteousness. Verse 19. This is one that opens it up for us in terms of light and darkness. And this is the condemnation. That light has come into the world and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. So within men without Christ, there is a love of darkness. Okay. If that were not the case, then you could just say, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and immediately they, they turn to that and say, that's great. But you note that uh, the body of Christ, the church, the people of God should be praying for others, praying for the lost that they come to a realisation of what state they're in and that they will come to Christ. Okay. Verse 20. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Okay. So those that want to go God's way will come to the light. I'll make a decision. Verse 21, but he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that should be you and me who are born again, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. You know the scripture that says in Ephesians, we have been created in Christ Jesus unto good works. We didn't earn our salvation. As I said before, it was bought by the Lord Jesus Christ's blood as the payment. But you'll notice that now that we are Christians, what are we going to be doing? We're doing truth. And we come to the light. We come to the light of the word of God. We come to the light of Jesus himself, God himself, that his deeds may be made manifest. 
that they are wrought in God. We want to know, Lord, what I'm, what I'm doing, is that acceptable to you? Is that your will? Okay. And so that's going to be the, the way we walk now as what the Bible calls the children of light. So let's have a look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, because this is a section of scripture that really reveals the state of those without Christ and why they need the gospel to come in into their lives. Remember, the gospel is called glorious, and this section of scripture shows that. It's a, it calls the gospel glorious in this. But let's start with uh, 2 Corinthians 4. We'll go from verses 1 to verse 6. So really concentrate on what this is saying because this will open up to you, or to all of us, it will open up what is the state of the world in at the moment. You know, it's, it, it, a lot of people think, oh, live a good life at the end of the life. Good deeds and bad deeds will be weighed up. And uh, if the good deeds outweigh the bad deeds, then you get it into heaven. Now, now that's the wrong view. It's certainly not the biblical view that believeth in Jesus. He's, uh, that, that person is the one that won't be perishing, but will be saved. Okay. So looking at starting from verse 1, it says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced, and really this should be all of us, have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Okay, so you can see that we renounce the wrong things okay, and we are people that are commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. We're, we're doing the right thing. We're doing the truth as we read before. Verse 3, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. The Bible's talking about a category of people who are lost, currently lost. They're in darkness, as we'll see. Verse 4, in whom the God of this world, let me just pause here. Notice God there has a little g. He's talking about Satan here. This is not the capital G God of the Bible. This is the little g, the God of this world, this fallen world. What is this God doing? And this, the word God here means a spiritual ruler. Okay. In whom the God of this world hath, what's he done? Blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. This is the primary work of the God of this world. This is the primary work of Satan to blind the minds of them which believe not. Keep them in blindness. Keep them away from the gospel. Keep them in blindness to their state, to the fact that they need Christ. Keep them in blindness. So let me read verse 4 again. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So you can see those in darkness, they know not at what they stumble. They're blinded. They're blinded. And it's very telling when you look at our society and it's, you know, coming against Christians and coming against the Bible and... Uh, changing laws and all types of things to get the Bible out. Well, we can't expose uh, uh, children to anything about the Bible. It's very telling, isn't it? The more that happens in a society, the, the more darkness comes in. This is why the gospel has to come in. The word of God has to come in as light. 
because there's blindness on their minds, they're in darkness. Think of a person who's blind, okay, they're in darkness. Verse 5, for we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So you can see that we who have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, who have believed the gospel, we see that light has shined in our hearts. And so and our hearts now are not in darkness. Our hearts are in light and have light, can receive the light. And that is to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So there's knowledge that comes into us. We start to know. When we read about those in darkness, they know not at what they stumble. But now we are people that can start to know the truth, know what's really happening in the society, know where we're going, know about the will of God, know how to walk by faith, know about the Bible, know about what happens after death, etc., etc. We can go on and on. You know. And 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 the more you have the light of God coming in, the more spiritual knowledge you'll have as as long as you're open to that as long as you're open to it so let's look at 1 peter chapter 2 verses 9 and 10 1 peter chapter 2 verses 9 and 10 i pray that this morning you are having a a clearer understanding that all around us there is darkness People in darkness, in desperate need, desperate need of the light to come into their life. Okay. So those who um, are not doing the will of God, those who are out of the will of God, well, darkness can, is, is coming into their lives and they need to come to the light or they are in a state of darkness. So looking at... 1 Peter chapter 2, look at verses 9 and 10. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. And notice there's a wonderful statement here about what has happened to us. Verse 9, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation, a peculiar people, it means people that stand out, okay, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you, what? Out of darkness into his marvellous light. Isn't that great? Which in time past were not a people. In other words, in time past we were not the people of God. We were not part of the family of God but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. So you can see that condemnation of sin is no longer in our lives because we have had forgiveness of sin, remission of sin, which means cancellation of sin. And God now looks on us as being righteous children children of light okay and as it says there god has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light and that is a good news thing to say people to people you need to come out of darkness into the marvelous light of god glory to god Look at uh, John 12, verse 46. John 12, verse 46. And God is showing us that we have, on, whilst we're on the earth, we have a mission. And uh, the Great Commission, of course, is what Christ said. 
to uh, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy, no- Holy Ghost. So we know that there is the teaching that has to happen, not teaching out of our own ideas, but teaching through the word of God that has to happen so that those currently in darkness see their need to come into the marvelous light. Okay, and a whole nations need to understand this. So looking at John 12, and we'll look at verse 46. John 12, verse 46. This is Jesus speaking here. He says, I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. And that also tells you that those who are not believing on him as the foundation of their lives, believing in him, should not are abiding in darkness if they're not in if they're not following Christ. But if we're believing on him, we're not going to be abiding or staying in the darkness. We're people that are going forward in the light of God. Going forward in the light of God. And as we understand this, then we understand we need to have more of the word, not less in our life. We read before that God's word is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. Look at that. A light unto our, unto our path means that we can know the direction ahead. We can see that there is a proper way to go. We don't have to be blind. We don't have to be stumbling around, not understanding things, not understanding the way to go. But Jesus, and let let me just um, repeat this. Jesus said in this verse, I am come a light into the world. Well, if the world didn't need light, why did he come? The world obviously needs light. God the Father, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. So loved the world, okay? The people in the world he loves. He doesn't want them to stay in darkness. He wants them to come out of darkness into his marvellous light. Jesus said, I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. So there are people who are abiding in darkness now. And they think it's okay not to go the way of God. Okay, some might have a bit of a wishy-washy understanding of it, but they need to come fully into the light of God. Have a look at Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5, verses 5 to 11. Just a couple more scriptures. I just want to open this up to us. Because the more we understand this area, the more we see, oh, that's why our society is going this way. That's why the gospel has to be preached. Okay. That's why the word of God has to be glorified and held up as a light. Ephesians 5, this is 5 to 11. It says, For this ye know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Okay, so those who are servants of sin, another term for them is the children of disobedience. Be not therefore partakers with them. We have to be separate from what they're doing. We cannot sit at the table of the wicked, or the table of the ungodly. Uh, you cannot be doing the same things as they do. It doesn't mean you don't speak to those who aren't saved. You obviously have to. And in our everyday life, we do. Okay, but you don't join in with their sin. You don't join in with their thinking. Because they're in blindness. I'm not saying that they don't understand certain things. They do, because 
obviously there's still light in our society, okay? Not everything is wrong or bad, but in terms of spiritual things, they know not at what they stumble. Let's keep on going. So verse 7, Be not ye therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes darkness. That means in the past you were darkness. But now are ye light in the Lord, walk as children of light. So what are we in the Lord? Light. We are light in the, in the Lord. Walk as children of light. What are we? Children of light. I am a child of light, we should be saying. I'm a child of light. I'm no longer. I'm no longer a child of disobedience. I'm no longer serving sin. I'm no longer in darkness. But as it says in verse 8 at the end part, but now, now, now that you've been born again, now that you've been saved, now that you've been brought out of the darkness into his marvellous light, now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Glory to God. Verse 9. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Okay, so this is important. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works works of darkness but rather reprove them this is where uh, as, as the scripture says sanct jesus said sanctify them truth through thy truth thy word is truth sanctify means separate or being separated from darkness from sin and separated unto the lord into righteousness and light and how is it done? Sanctify them through thy truth, Jesus said in John, John 17, 17. Thy word is truth. Well, we all also read that the entrance of God's word gives light. Light. That's why uh, exposing yourself to biblical preaching and teaching, exposing yourself to the word of God constantly, being a student of the word, being a person that gets into the Word and meditates on the Word of God. It's all doing you good. It's all bringing light more and more onto uh, your situations, into your heart, into your life. And it's showing you good things, good things that God is giving you. As it says there, walk as children of light. So verse 11 says, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. I'm just going to finish with 1 John chapter 2, verses 9 to 11, because, as I said before, John talks a lot about darkness versus light. And he talks a lot in 1 John about how to walk as a person of light or a child of light. And uh, so we'll look at 1 John 2, verses 9 to 11, and we'll close with this. 1 John 2, 9 to 11. Uh, John also talks a lot about the difference between love and hate, truth and error. So if you read the Gospel of John and the Epistles of John, you'll see that. Starting from verse 9, he that saith he is in the light, well, that's what we should be saying, and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. So you can see that abiding in the light causes you not to stumble. Okay? Abiding in the light causes you not to stumble. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness and knoweth not whither he goeth because that darkness hath what? Blinded his eyes. Okay, so you can see that 
the little g-god of this world, Satan, is all about keeping people in darkness and blindness. If you understand that, then you'll know the difference between what's good and what's bad, what's light and what's dark. And you'll say, no, I choose the way of light. I walk as a child of light, praise the Lord. Let's close in prayer.